Greetings and welcome to Focus on Parliament, where we digest the business of Parliament and what they've been able to do through the week. And this week, the most contentious conversation that has happened from Parliament into the gallery has been on the anti-homosexuality bill that was tabled and discussed and passed by Parliament. And today we want to sit down to interrogate, you know, what that means in legislation, but also for us as citizens as we digest the conversations that happen in Parliament. And to help me have this conversation, I have um, Chemonges Timothy from Parliament Watch. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Tricia, and good morning to our viewers. I'm glad to be here. And next to Timothy, a new person for me, but necessarily not new to debate and conversation, um, Okot Ola from Macquarie University and from UID. Welcome to the show, Okot. Uh, thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to have you, and I hope you do come back mm -hmm. and, you know, share with us in debate and in mm -hmm. banter here. Yeah, and I next to yeah. course, I have Apollo from Uganda Parliamentary Press Association. It's good to always have you, Apollo. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tricia. It's a pleasure being part of this conversation. And gentlemen, I know this week, if you've looked in and seen the conversations that have happened on different panels and, pan and different TV stations, it has been around the homosexuality bill that was passed, and certainly with quorum. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. <laughs> and so we are trying to, you know, um, look at the difference in the in the Bahati law and in this one. I think when it comes to quorum, this time there'll be no repeal. But uh, as we continue this conversation on the anti-homosexuality bill, critical for us to, you know, begin this conversation is whether the anti-homosexuality bill is even necessary and even if the provisions as they as they stand right now and i hope you've really digested it as as it stands right now are they you know relevant to the discourse in in, in our in our country uganda today i'll begin with you timothy and then i'll get just your feel of the bill itself so thank you so much trisha mm -hmm. and uh, you know the the debate on anti-homosexuality bit has, has really generated debate both uh, at the national level and international. Yes. After the bill was passed, you've uh, you've followed the sentiments that the international community have, uh, have have brought forth, urging the president to to not sign the bill. Mm -hmm. But also, just to emphasize that the bill it's it's not the bill is not yet law. It's not yet so true. it's until the president uh, assents to it, then that's when it becomes uh, law. But also, the president has the discretion. Really, he can he can return it back to, to to parliament for reconsideration, but also give his comments on on what he feels or what he thinks is good for the country. And so, it's also good to emphasize that it is within the mandate of parliament. To pass these laws as mm. provided for under mm. the law, mm. which is also a very very key mandate. But also, it's true to say the first time we find ourselves here, we've yeah. had this same same issue previously, and uh, the law was struck out largely on a preliminary objection for want of quorum. Mm. And in um, in the recent bill when it was passed, you noticed that uh, that was also one of the key areas that. Uh, the house was 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 focusing on, mm -hmm. and they ensured that the numbers are there to pass the bill, and for which it was passed really. Also, it's just good to note that uh, while the court was considering the first the first law which was passed, mm -hmm. the, the 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 law was not looked into on its merits, but rather but, but, but rather on the technicalities, and so if the president chooses to pass to pass this law. It then gives us because there, are people, there is a section of, uh, of, of, of 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 citizens who are who are actually intending to bring a case against mm -hmm. this. So it will be an opportunity for us to 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 really now understand from our uh, our, our 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 courts mm -hmm. in terms of its merits and if it's something that is good for our country. 
indeed. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and maybe to bring a quote into the conversation, when you look at the anti-homosexuality bill, you actually notice that a lot of the provisions in are already provided for in the clauses are provided for in other laws. Earlier we were talking about um, the sexual offences bill and then the Children's Act, and you, you realize there is a duplication of clauses. Is it necessary to have this bill passed with such relegation left, even when we know there there is already you know redress for these critical areas in other laws? Um, <clears throat> thank you very much. So, I am not a member of parliament, mm. and neither am I an agent of of, of the West. Mm -hmm. So, in this conversation, I'm not an agent of any of the the two sides of the agenda. Uh, which gives us also a chance to explore the issues, especially surrounding this topic. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are the technicalities, which we can always deal with here and there. Mm. But perhaps more than anything in this debate, I represent maybe the younger generation. Yeah. Uh, you introduced me as Macarius, though I recently finished. But I remember in around 2004, when... George Bush called for a panel to discuss um, the approach to the Middle East. And one of the people he called was Farid Zakaria, mm. who we all know from yes, CNN. Yes, yes. And Farid told him, this issue of bombing the Islamic world will not build Western hegemony within the Arab world. If anything, it will build resent in the long term. And then he gave George Bush what would be the classic propaganda playbook. Mm -hmm. you know, on how to change the culture, the brain, the software mm -hmm. on which the people in the Arab world move. And right now you can see it building if you followed the recent yeah. Iran mm -hmm. uh, riots. Uh, wh how does that come into our conversation? As the younger generation, I come from the generation uh, that perhaps more than anything is less influenced by my physical surrounding, my mm -hmm. physical state. Mm -hmm. And we are more of citizens of the online world. In that online world, for the past 20 years, gadgets have been more and more into our faces. And we interface with content that comes straight from the centers of these agendas, mm. like homosexuality and ETC that are coming to our faces. For example, we love Western movies. But in those Western movies, sometimes I'm told lately you can't win an award if there's no gay person. So while we might not for example, support gays. A lot of our generation has been facing this so much that they can't even hate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, outrightly come out and hate such a person. So this is a battle that the West started, if we call it so, maybe 10, 20 years ago. Mm. And now this is maybe phase two. And if you look at it in a long or a wider sense, it actually serves, it's a war it's a battle well won by our parliament, but are they winning the war? Was homosexuality this relevant among men of us? We could always discuss the clauses, but let's use our logic. Was homosexuality a mainstream issue before this year? Mm -hmm. um, the terms that we use, you see the clause one of, 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 the, of the bill. Mm -hmm. The terms that we use, are we the ones that define them? You know. So for me, I am more interested actually in uh, you know, this wider analysis of the factor that we are currently facing. Because if not, um, uh, does the law currently, the bill in its current state serve political populist interest? Totally. Does the current uh, geopolitical context favor such a bill? We have never had a better chance to speak our minds as, as uh, Ugandans, because mm -hmm. right now there are new sources of, new centers of power that don't leverage on the West. Uh, but however, the Western propaganda war on homosexuality, are we winning it 10 years from now? Mm. Will we still have the same population uh, fervently hating homosexuality? Yeah. Or we are going to have, and remember we are all above the average age, who are indifferent to it, and therefore will trash the law, you know, because of other interests. So that is where I would like to, and that's how I'd like to contribute perhaps as an agent of the young people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And maybe to also bring up a little into this. Um, 
when when you look at the the bill as it is a lot of your questions have been on its applicability and what lacuna it sets you know as in, in this moment but from the submissions of the dpp was that it's quite implement it's not very well uh, there is no ability to implement such a law and even then with that highlight the law has still proceeded to be passed is it possible that the implementation is going to be where the law struggles if it is passed into law well thank you so much trisha and uh, our viewers i uh, to answer you i I think the implementation of this law and uh, any other law or other laws that we that exist today or that have been in our law books has always been questionable. I uh, happened to be in that meeting when the committee received submissions from um, from um, the religious leaders. I remember Martin Semper and, uh, and other colleagues, mm. but it was highlighted that even um, the existing laws have not been well implemented because of several other reasons that we all know that possibly uh, there, is, uh, a, there are issues with capacity um, to, to, to investigate and, and, and uh, bring or take the cases to a logical conclusion. There have been issues about police mm. being corrupt and other, I mean, other enforcers of the law being corrupt. So the argument were that, um, well, it, 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 that we have um, laws in place. We have the penal code, it is in place. I think it is uh, section 145, well, it is in place. It lays out well um, how uh, homosexuality is, 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 is a criminal offense and, and, and there, are, there are penalties already in the law. So they were, they are, they were, their argument was that um, the issue is not uh, uh, the law or the absence of the law. It is about implementation. Um, if we are well um, able to implement the existing laws, mm -hmm. we may not need this, uh, this new law. So I, to answer you, I think um, there will always be issues around implementation of this and any other law, if at all it is assented to by the president. But um, I think uh, what you asked, um, I want to go back to what you asked, that uh, is this law or legislation necessary? I, I, um, I will answer. In, in, in the affirmative that, well, if parliament uh, um, has been, um, I mean, coming to this level, they have picked from, from what the society is, 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 is clamoring for. Mm. Uh, it, it's not parliament that, uh, that initiated this. It was initiated by the members of the society from religious leaders, cultural leaders, and even ordinary members of the society who thought that um, this um, the, there needs to be a law to re okay to curb the vice of homosexuality. We know what has been reported of late in in, in, in schools and and daily square, even in in, in the churches and, and daily square. So I think um, the legislation to some extent was necessary, but then. Um, when we come to how it was, uh, it was, it, it was enacted and passed. Then possibly we can, uh, we can discuss when we reach there. Indeed, yeah. uh, Timothy. What lacuna is a bill like this set to cure mm -hmm. in in our community and in in, in Uganda as a large? And, and hear me out because when you look at the penalties and the areas of redress, mm -hmm. you, you you start to 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 question to what end is this law going to help us you know deal with the issue we drop a wave in time thank you uh one of the arguments that i've seen uh the the propagators of the anti-homosexuality bill pushing forward is the aspect of our african values mm -hmm. of our very very valued uh, africanity and africanness i think that uh while it could be a valid issue I think that we've 
we've deviated as a society very greatly from what the 1995 constitution mm. envisaged our budget. And I think it's there seems to be a selective approach towards which values you want to cherish as a society. Mm -hmm. So for me, what what value could exceed the the the, the torture that we see? Mm -hmm. What value? We, we, I think there are people who don't have the moral. Thought. You can't speak about more about values well, when honest. you are championing corruption. Mm -hmm. Look at the Auditor General's report. It, literally, people's lives are at stake because of the money being stolen. Mm -hmm. And you pick up the audacity to mention we must pass this law well, because we want to protect the values. We see people every day are being tortured other people disappearing. As a result, you see families are suffering. Mm -hmm. And then, all of a sudden, you are the sacrosanct person, very, very mm -hmm. clean. Mm -hmm. We need now to cherish, we need to push for, mm -hmm. for, for, for values. And also, and so I think that is really on the, on the double speak of, of, of it. And uh, if, if, if we are talking about values, I think there is need to look at it objectively. Mm -hmm. But also speaking specifically on the bill, you will notice that, uh, of course, it, it, it puts forth quite uh, a number of uh, penalties for people who, who are found guilty of, uh, but as, as my colleagues are mentioning, the practicality of enforcing those laws is, will be put to test. Because if you understand, Uganda does not have shortage of law, we fall short of enforcing the laws. Mm -hmm. That's where we that's where the line is, is 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 drawn. That we have quite a number of laws. And specifically for this you notice that uh, it uh, the conversations emanate from the penal code yeah. that uh, provides against the unnatural offences uh, uh, going against the nature of, 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 of the law, order of nature. The order of nature. Mm -hmm. And so and probably it could be right that it's it's okay to further put more emphasis on a specific law because Parliament has done that in the past, mm -hmm. where uh, notwithstanding that under the penal code you have uh, offences such as corruption, mm -hmm. and then you further go and expound it in the in in an act of Parliament, mm -hmm. the Anti-Corruption Act. Mm -hmm. You have the penal, code, the, the penal code providing mm -hmm. for terrorism. And then you further you need to emphasize on those specific things yeah. on on maybe an independent law. I'm very very optimistic that this law, well, probably not optimistic, but I think that I'm one of those very very uh, people who are, who are waiting to see what the court will, will will be ruling in the event the head of state uh, uh, assents to assents it, to it. Mm. because you 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 notice that. Uh, the conversations about human rights and our I know as as as, as a state we are sovereign mm. and we should be able to make our decisions independently. However, as Uganda we are not uh, an independent country outside the, the global the yes. global yes. but even when when we pass these uh, these laws, especially for parliament, how I saw this bill uh, passed I think that it fell short of uh, it fell short of uh, how Parliament should process a bill, mm. not in terms of the procedure, but in terms of objectivity, in terms of openness, mm. in terms of uh, info like in the information mm. evidence based mm. sort of. Mm. So I know that this is a very emotive issue, mm -hmm. but at all times. Parliament, when considering any matter, they must be objective, they must be informed, they must be open, and they must be balanced mm -hmm. at all times, mm -hmm. notwithstanding the issue at hand, because you're processing matters that affect the lives of your citizens. Yes. And even in the laws, as you prescribe whatever penalties, whatever offenses, it's within the mandate of, of, of Parliament. That is very good, and for me, as far as the mandate, how Parliament executed its 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 mandate in terms of this, it it passed the laws. Whether it fell short or not, we leave now that to to court. If it will, it will eventually. And I'm speaking in anticipation because mm -hmm. I've I've been in touch with quite a number of colleagues 
who are, who, who are very who are waiting for for the ascent. Mm. It's actually the conversation before some of my colleagues were, we are not going to we are not going to appear before the committee. We shall allow for the house to consider it with those mistakes mm -hmm. so that we meet in court mm -hmm. so that we instead of putting more light on this mm -hmm. let's meet in the court mm -hmm. and so we await and see but uh, in terms of uh, in, th in terms of this bill i think that there the, the needed to be more because i saw i saw that there was quite a wide consultation mm -hmm. that the medical the medical uh medical guys, practitioners, practitioners weighed their weighed, weighed, their, weighed in on there mm -hmm. and you could see their submission both on the minority report mm -hmm. and the majority report mm -hmm. and so it's 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 still it's still a conversation that we need to see is it worth our our time mm -hmm. is it the most urgent thing that we should but, be and able i think to, that is a question i want mm -hmm. to ask next mm -hmm. to a court mm -hmm. with all the pressing issues why can't we see the same energy against corruption and abuse of human rights as the, the energy the August House put in in addressing and passing the, the homosexuality bill? And rightly so, because we are coming from a period of so many um, scandals, corruption scandals, we was the NSSF workers' money. We had the KCCA money for the Kampala remaking of the Kampala roads. And right after that, we had those in the same area we had the iron shit saga and so there was a lot of corruption flooding the streets of Kampala and, uh, and beyond as far as Karamoja mm. but the energy or lack thereof of addressing these issues cannot be measured to the energy put in passing the anti-homosexuality bill so why isn't there that urgency in addressing these kind of issues yeah that's very interesting. I think, and my brother hinted, morality, maybe we need to redefine morality. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I think perhaps the young ones who are always blamed of being immoral might actually be the most moral generation as things turn. Because in terms of the effect of the acts, um, we have seen a lot of these scandals over time. Mm -hmm. If you remember the images of those Karamoja women, Yes. She's sitting and she falls. You think she's sleeping, she's dead. Mm. And, you know, someone has the uh, consciousness, you know, to go ahead and take from someone like that. So it's, an, it's also something our gen we come from, a, we have faced a lot of these things over time. Nothing changes. Uh, perhaps we, as young people, we are very demoralized as well. Uh, of what capacity we have. It's why maybe sometimes uh, we are not even, if, I, I don't know if, if you followed, but a lot, of, a lot of young people were not actually moved by this bill, mm -hmm. are not actually concerned. Mm -hmm. They have their different views, but they're not rightly behind the parliament because this is not something that is going to bring about change. The law itself, uh, speaking comparatively, they say mimicry. Imitation is the best flirtation. Mm -hmm. There are about 33 countries mm -hmm. in Africa that bar yeah. homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Hardly any of them have had any arrests, let alone retrospectively our own penal code. Mm -hmm. But looking at the countries around. Now, action against homosexuals. Um, I was reading earlier today in The Guardian that it's Cameroon that has had most acts against homosexuals, followed by Egypt. But what has happened is, normally when these laws are put in place, because they are not able to effect as the state, the communities are radicalized against the homosexual. And justice happens. So the action is actually mm -hmm. communal. So the effect of the state law is that as a gay, and perhaps speaking as a lawyer, mm -hmm. and seeing this law, the best thing for a gay person is actually to be arrested by police. Because it's very easy to argue you free. For example, mm -hmm. same-sex marriage and uh, in, in law contract means something must be valid, legal. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's not a marriage mm -hmm. if you're, sure. if you're mm -hmm. trying to engage. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a show, something mm -hmm. else. So the best thing a gay person can wish for going forward in a radicalized society like this is to, to be, be arrested, arrested by, by police, police so mm -hmm. that you can call your lawyer, mm -hmm. you know. 
Uh, otherwise, it's going to just radicalize the communities against these gay people. The other thing is, if we are going to deal with an agenda, and maybe this is why Africa has been failing on, on this matter, is because we are reacting. Yeah. We are reacting towards a Western or a foreign uh, agenda placed on us. Mm. If you look at the Russian law, Russia has a law, but it's not the Anti-Homosexuality Act. First of all, the fact that the law starts by anti, which is a negative prefix. Mm. Mm. It is called the law against propaganda harming traditional family values. Perhaps we should have a law called uh, African Values Act, that then these things come within, you know, where we first of all define our values, mm -hmm. because you cannot fight something when you don't have an alternative. Mm -hmm. How do you know what values the young people uphold? Um, they interface with social media more than even physical. So I think that would give an opportunity for more proactive approaches. Mm -hmm. We can then have a genuine conversation on homosexuality and the African culture. So I think that would be a more proactive <coughs> approach. It would provide way more answers, mm -hmm. and then it would be our law when it comes out. And I do not think that in the true, if we actually going, if we have that discussion, that we'll have things like death, uh, life sentence, something like that. No, that is not our African nature. Our mm -hmm. African nature is, um, is it re? It's all about um, continuing together as a society. Mm -hmm. You know, Ubuntu. 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 Oh. Ubuntu. Oh. So can Ubuntu, for example, inform our discussion on such things? Mm -hmm. But we don't have the opportunity because we are reacting and we are reacting so fast. Yeah. So that is my opinion. And mm. and when we say African culture, it's the imagination that also our Pan Africanness. Mm. We are in touch with it mm. as much as we claim African culture. Mm. Yeah. But then, um, let me bring up Oloy into the conversation. When you look at such a bill, what impact does it have on our political economy, but then also on our international relations going forward? Before I do that, uh, I, I was intrigued by. Um, some comments and the submissions of my colleagues here. Um, I want to, to some extent, disagree with uh, uh, the assertion that we do not have our values as uh, our, our cultural, traditional values as Af Africans or Ugandans. We know it that uh, we have, um, over time, had our values as Africans. Africans are known to be people who, who are all embracing, that's one. Um, like, that's, that's, that's an African. They will become people, we, we share. Um, we have had, um, over time, um, those, they are, they are not written anywhere, mm. but I'm saying those are the values that define an African. Africans um, are people who, uh, who, 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 who want to, 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 to remain together, uh, that's one of their values. For instance, let me give you a, um, um, a case. Uh, for us, um, we, we usually want to, even if it is a family, want to remain in a cluster. We don't want to, 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 to scatter. Mm -hmm. There are values of, of Africans, but if you go in the Western world, you see that now they have uh, elderly homes. When the people get aged, they take them. But for us, we want, uh, we want to remain with our, 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 our old people around us. We want to care for them. So there are those unwritten values that we have. And uh, for the case of marriages, we all we cannot agree that we have, um, they are even written in our constitution. Yeah. The, 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 how a marriage is defined, a union of, of two people, a man and a woman. So I think some of these things are, are, on, are on paper and those are the values possibly uh, the legislators and everyone behind this bill were trying to protect the family values. And uh, another thing is uh, that um, we, we, are, we are more of a godly country. We, even though it is defined in our motto for God and my country. Maybe to pause you there. Mm. Uh, when you look at the constitution of Uganda, it says Uganda is a secular country. And so to claim to, do, to, to make laws using the Bible 
aren't we you know diverting from you know our reality that you know religion hasn't been the 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 the, the basis on which we create laws in this land I don't think homosexuality is uh, is, is is abominable in the Bible only even the Quran is laid out that homosexuality actually homosexual should be stoned and killed so I, I think being a sexual account they were trying to not to align the country in only one uh, religion that this is this is uh, an Islamic country or what yes I, I can agree with my colleagues here that uh, the issue has been emotive have been emotions and uh, um, some somehow these emotions caught up with the the, 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 the people behind uh, the introduction of this bill and and who possessed the bill uh, for instance if you look at the penalties I don't think uh, as the whole world is is, is, is is moving away from a death penalty you you mm-hmm. are already uh, uh, introducing mm-hmm. uh, such a penalty and uh, there was other outrageous uh, penalties mm-hmm. that were introduced for instance you want to to, to penalize a, a person who owns um an, a, who owns premises you know um i also saw in the in in in, in the media we who Yes, practice media, media. Yes. you want to go for, for for the media practitioners who mm-hmm. who will be suspected either of for, for, for promoting homosexuality i think emotions played out to some extent mm-hmm. and uh, there could be some mistakes that were made which like my colleagues said we wait for the legal brains to interpret and see what uh, how how best it was it was put together but uh, all in all i think um, another thing that played out was uh, um, the, 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 and and my colleague talked about it that urge to 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 send out a statement that we are we we are a sovereign country we don't want to be influenced by another country it also played out behind the scenes there was that statement that was uh, pushed out that we, we we don't want this we are for this so there were there are many issues that played out one um, those traditional and cultural values indeed there was to some extent people who thought that the homosexuality is infringing on their tradition and, and family and african values two there was also uh, what i talked about uh, wanting to send a message we and we have been doing it if you if you if you have listened to the president of red and, and and he has been making statements um, um, against the western influence that is that that is being imposed on africa not only uganda but on africa so i think there could have been mistakes but i still think we needed um, some some legislation to guide like uh, timothy said we, we uh, the proponents of this law were saying we have a penal code act yes it it, it, it criminalizes um, um, canon knowledge of what and what and, uh, going against the old of nature yes but again he said we have managed to put i mean to introduce other laws independent legislations that specifically uh, come to 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 to, to regulate and, and and guide on on matters like terrorism mm-hmm. so um well more uh, while it is a matter of morality and we may we may actually uh, challenge the proponents on on their moral ground and their, their their moral authority on matters of corruption and all others but i think uh, there, there is a time when possibly you need to do something we have we have we, we, I, I talked about what has been reported elsewhere and not only being reported people um, i mean being uh, found in, in, in acts of homosexuality so um, and those people who are conservative are attacked they think that possibly we need a legislation that can guide the next generation their children and and and, and people and, and, and even in committees people testified the victims themselves came and testified that i was lowered into this act i was uh, uh, um, i mean outrageous acts where uh, where i uh, were done and and and, and um, i'm suffering uh, people who have people under care who are the victims of homosexuality are there there are very many cases so i think like any other um, uh, like any other issue that comes up in society and we say this 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 look at how we can 
uh, work around it. For instance, like the issue of, of, of computer misuse, where it's a bad law, but uh, you cannot, we as, 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 as who, who are uh, in media and that, mm -hmm. we know that it is a bad law and we have spoken against it, you know. But again, when you go back, you see that possibly there is a need to regulate the content that runs either on these digital platforms and elsewhere. You, to some extent, see that there is need for that. So as the world, as, as, as trends change, um, we, we, we have also to move and look at what we think are in our best interests and if it is needed then we, we protect them. I think that is the spirit the proponents of this law uh, had at the back of their minds to protect those interests of African culture, that nationalist um, spirit to protect what is ours and again uh, what we think is, is, uh, is, is good for us. I don't think it came out of the brew and uh, maybe we cannot say they were influenced. Well, um, Trisha and my colleagues, we, 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 it's, it's very unfair to think that uh, possibly Parliament uh, spent all that time and uh, uh, without uh, a reason. But um, 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 and, and looking at uh, what was coming from the public, I think uh, there was a, 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 a need for for, for Parliament to sit and, and do something about it. But you also asked about what the implications could be after passing this law. Mm. And uh, it is obvious uh, we've, we've uh, already uh, um, witnessed the, re the response from, especially from the West. I think it is uh, the Secretary of State, Anthony Brinken, made a comment about it and, and several other uh, key figures in, in the, the Western world. We um, anticipate, um, um, we anticipate um, aid cuts, um, like it, uh, it, it, it was at, uh, after 2014. And um, we also um, know that uh, um, the LGBT community has very, I mean, um, has, 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 made, has, has a lot of powerful uh, figures behind it. You expect that possibly there will be uh, sanctions on some individuals. We are aware that um, even the mover of, 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 of the bill in, in 2009, Honorable Bahati David, is also, his movements are restricted to some countries. So um, uh, those are the implications, um, aid cards and uh, possible sanctions and uh, we, we can only wait because there is another hurdle. There is, uh, there, 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 we, there is, there, there, there is still, there is still room um, before the president assents to the bill, and uh, when the bill is assented to, uh, automatically they know that it is, it is done and dusted, and that's when we would, we, we may see uh, the, the real implications of the, of the whole legislation. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, um, when, when, when the president was, was giving the special address to parliament, he cautioned and said there was need to, you know, do really, really deep research, ask the experts on what they say. Is it a question of nature or a question of nurture? But when you looked at the proceedings of the August House as they were debating this, certainly it didn't look like the research or the consultations bore consequence or implication on, on the passing of the bill. Do you think that it was a rushed process? And if it was a rushed process, are we missing the critical questions that needed to be asked before such a bill was passed? Thank you. Thank you, Tricia. I think when the president comes out to say that uh, we need to further deliberate and understand why uh, whether it's nature, or it's, it's by nature, or whether it's an alternative to that. I think the president is, uh, is being smart on this, because this matter has been addressed in the past. Yes. Actually, one of the things, if you notice that, uh, I think the president in 2014 met uh, a, a, a team of, of doctors, of doctors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he discussed this to the ex extensively. They actually presented him with a report, or whatever findings that they were discussing. Mm. So it's a matter that the president has been able to interrogate, the president knows, 
but also the nation needs to know that. Mm -hmm. And so when when he, he comes out at this point in time to say that we need to we need to further discuss, I know it gives is providing room for us to interrogate this matter to look it further, but also to understand probably if maybe rights you know you know rights evolve. Mm -hmm. I mean, today you find the aspects to the rights to to internet. Mm -hmm being very very private mm -hmm. yet uh, a few years back it wasn't society is an evolving one and uh, i know that uh, there so while society has to be very keen in terms of its values in terms of its in terms of its well-being but also protecting its sovereignty there are certain things that uh, must be put into consideration mm -hmm. in terms of uh, in terms of being able to treat everyone equally irrespective of your race, irrespective mm -hmm. of your gender, irrespective of who you are generally. Mm -hmm. And so all of us should be treated as human beings in the first place. I know that uh, there are certain things that societies may not really, uh, may not accommodate. Practices, whether, whether it's a practice, talk about corruption, talk about any other thing, they should never be given uh, space. Mm -hmm. And I think we, society as it is, must every time into introspect itself, try to look into whatever situation that's happening within the circumstance and make a firm position. Was it a rush process? We've seen bills in the past uh, that have uh, have been passed in one day. Yeah, like the national uh, insurance yes. uh, scheme. Mm. Mm. It was so, um, passed. It passed in. In, in, in a day, mm. we've seen actually also in, in, in the eleventh Parliament, mm. we saw the Parliament Amendment Act, mm -hmm. the Parliament Amendment mm -hmm. Act, mm -hmm. which which saw to to have the speaker, mm -hmm. the deputy speaker, part of the parliamentary commission. commission. Mm -hmm. uh, aspects. There was there was an element of having the the Rebecca Kadaga institution, institution. Mm -hmm. brought back to the parliamentary mm -hmm. institute of studies. And many other things. It was passed within within one day, and it's clearly it's, it's allowed under the laws where a member can uh, can move a motion that upon uh, upon first reading, the matter automatically proceeds without mm. going to to the committee mm. to the respective committee. And it's it, it's really, but given the magnitude of, of of certain things, you've you've seen actually when the when they when there are specific laws, you remember the uh, the divorce bill. It was the yeah, divorce bill, yeah, yeah. marriage where, and divorce, marriage bill. And divorce yeah. bill, where actually they had to facilitate members mm -hmm. to go and pick the views of the public really to understand. Okay, so as 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 the constituents, what uh, what do you think about this? And so, depending on the magnitude of the matter, depending on the interest at play, and depending on which people are. Would want how bad this thing would, would would really be would be. You've you've asked my colleague here whether this was the most important or urgent mm -hmm. urgent uh, matter that needed to be to be considered. Mm -hmm. I think that there are many other things really in terms of. It's just that as our demand is that if there is if if you are putting effort of eighty percent on a specific matter, please let's apply the same. Of course, mm. we cannot we cannot champion values when it comes to uh, anti homosexuality bill and other, other other matters which are related, and try to lower the bar when it comes to torture. Go to the Uganda Airlines report. Or, or even to the Uganda Airlines report mm. and all other matters that involve corruption. You've seen you, you've seen the the manner in which the the saga, the OPM is being handled. Yeah. The the courts and the and the iron sheets. It's 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 it's, it's a real it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. However, it is not being handled with the energy, with the zeal mm -hmm. that we see other matters such as uh, the anti homosexuality being handled. If the same energy is put there, Ugandans are, are actually the, the cost of living has gone high. The, the country is facing quite of course, a number of challenges, others within its, uh, within its capacity, within its means, but others may be external. Parliament must be seen to be the true picture 
a clear represent a representation of its people. Yeah. I know that the argument could be that the the, the, the proposition's in the anti-homosexuality bill truly represented the truly represented the people's views. However, I know that even as Honorable Fox Odoi was presenting a minority report, mm. not only was he pre presented <laughs> with uh, with a bit of uh, with a bit of uh, resistance, but also the bit of you know they were largely emotions. Mm -hmm. But also you you know that this bill had issues to do with uh, with uh, overbearing nature of the leadership of of parliament mm -hmm. to the extent you could hear. Uh, statements such as we shall put a book at the entrance and see who is more homo, who is mm -hmm. not. We are going to we are going to do this. We are We're going, going to, to vote by raising hands. Yes, we are going mm. to raise we are going to do all these kind of things. And and probably it could be by the fact that uh once beaten twice shy and so you want to rectify the mistakes that we were there in the past. But I think that even as we even as even as this bill was being considered Members needed to be given the leeway, the leverage to make up their mind. I know there are quite a number of them that uh, I've raised, and these are, I've, I've talked to many of them. There, there is an increasing fear of members openly and being objective in specific matters. And so, once the leadership of parliament has taken side, you find yourself automatically siding by that because of the interest at play within parliament mm -hmm. and so many of them don't want to they don't want to collide with the interest of the, mm -hmm. of, 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 of the, leadership. the leadership and so that puts the whole essence of the legislative processes the legal framework and the role that parliament plays within a democratic setting to test True. essentially it pa parliament may consider any matter. And, you, and if you read the, what, what the Constitution provides, <coughs> is that uh, Parliament shall make laws for the peace and good governance of, of our country. And even to that magnitude, you notice that it's a huge responsibility put on them. And the fair thing is that all matters must be considered in an objective way. You've uh, Also, there have been concerns that uh, the leadership uh, a bit... Uh, they, 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 sometimes they are fluid. Mm. They cease to be the, the the speakers, and they move towards debating the mm. debating the, 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 the issue. The, yeah. So you know, the speaker is supposed to be the arbiter. Mm. He's supposed to help the conversations in the house. She, she actually at one point turned into a whip because she was telling members, don't go, we are going to vote at yeah. the end, yeah. mm. please don't go without mm. voting. Mm. So it's, you see, it's, it's a big issue. And so the manner in which I think many of these bills are, are, are considered, you've noticed that uh, these days there are quite a number of bills being returned by the, by the president back mm. to the house, sure. not because the president is, 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 is against them, but because there are quite a number of, uh, there are quite a number of gaps that are, uh, that, uh, are seen on those bills. The most recent we have the local content bill. It was brought with so many uh, comments. Actually, I think there were quite a number. The president cited so many things, others which you would uh, you would actually imagine are so obvious mm. that they were supposed to have been considered while on the floor or at the committee stage, and you wonder where where, where could be where could be the problem. I know. Let's say this bill. You know the the. the it's true to mention that um, it's, it's true to say that we must pass the laws, but also it's true to be aware of the political and the environment in which certain things are operating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even as you hear Apollo mentioning that there are aids which are going to be cut, there are international relations which are likely to be affected, and many people are likely to be denied visas and mm -hmm. many other things. Mm -hmm. It means that it's just not a law. It means that there are people who are directly affected both in terms yes. of their livelihood, not just the people who probably the law is targeting, other people, the law has a direct impact effect, on impact them. On, mm. on them. And so it, it is something that uh, has to be handled in, the, in, in, a, in a very, very careful manner. Mm -hmm. Because you find it's the life. So yesterday I could see uh, the United Nations, the, the one which is responsible for AIDS, mm -hmm. UN AIDS. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they came out, uh, of course, uh, urging the president not to, to sign the bill, but also affirming the aspects of human rights. Mm. I know that as, as, as Africans, we must cherish our values, but also there, I know I'm not saying that we must compromise them, but I'm just saying that we must be very, very careful when it comes to, to how we handle the matters, mm. because there are many, there are many, there are many, there are many issues that surround all these elements, and we can't be just raising the card of, of our Africanness, of our, of our, of, mm. of our Ubuntu religion. Mm and go ahead and and so for me really the house at this point in time needs to a bit step back mm -hmm. specifically within its mandate reflect and see where could be are we are we, are we moving on well what could be affecting the roles that we're executing mm -hmm. because you notice that this if, if you listen strictly especially within the if you listen to the radio radio callers look at what's happening within the social the social social media platforms of course you may say that these ones are elitist but also if you listen to the radio radio in some of these programs mm. you notice that there is a, the the perception that the public has of parliament is that parliament is not representing their true views and so there is need to reflect on that and even as parliament says that we do represent the views of the people that must not just happen, but it must be seen to, to be happen. happening. True. You can't say that today because we passed this law because our 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 our, our, our constituents say that we've seen that we've seen it in the past MPs going automatic, going contrary to what their their constituents are saying. Mm -hmm. You've seen we saw during the the Toji mm -hmm. while the people had a, a different view. The members stood on the floor and said, uh, my people of I don't know where have said yes, which was so. And so for me, the aspect of representation, the, the manner in which the house is handling the, its business, there is need to, and, 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 and there's, there's still time. We are just in the second, uh, in the second year, yeah. from transition to the third year, when we can still interrogate how work is going, how we should do better but also ensure that our country is truly representative, but also speaks to the tenets of democracy. Interesting. Yeah. Um, one of the entry points for this law was on, you know, the rights of children. And the critical question was, if there is a lot of homosexual activity happening in schools, we ought to have a report. But into passing this, this, this bill, there was no report on the, you know, on the offenses that were happening on the children. And the journalist that tried to do that, that documentary and, and investigation was arrested from those, from those, you know, those schools. But then also, when you look at the Uganda police report, um, it has more children, you know, sexually harassed and violated by heterosexual men and you know, the crime rate, the defilement, the rape, a lot of the things that are happening to children are done by heterosexual men than homosexual. And maybe also the data for the homosexual activities happening on, men, on, on children is also missing. How are we passing a law that is not informed by data? And in the event that it's not informed by data, how do we rectify having a law, you know, backed on 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 the victims that went to the committees and on nothing else but that. Yeah, thank you very much. So if you notice, um, I would like to take the view. I know the president to be um, an ardent game theorist and I am a big fan of game theory. Mm. When the president says, go and think through this law, it's not that he hasn't thought about yeah. the children of Uganda. And many of us know there's a lot of law legislation against sexual assault yeah. the children's there's an act a whole act protecting children against offenses and generally and and just sorry to go back on on that issue but okay. if you look at um once again also to uh, my brother disagreed with me so it's only fair that 
worries. I, Please I give do it a debate. Into it. Yeah. So naturally, um, normally when <laughs> someone comes up against you, and in this case, the against us is um, the West is pro- promoting propaganda uh, on our children okay. and all this. Mm. The natural step is to fight back and hit it with a hammer if you mm. can, you know, and destroy it. And I feel like that's exactly what we did. However, uh, as, a, as a, a love of strategy and in a lot of these spaces where strategy is made that impacts a lot of people, mm. um, a lot of game theory has been developed um, in managing society over the last 70 years. The reason we have had global peace for the last 70 years is because of things like strategic ambiguity, mm. where the US chooses to ignore a particular matter or attacks it from a certain way. We see how they handle Taiwan, we see how they handle Middle East and all these cases. So it only makes sense that even for our case, and for me, I feel like what worked best strategically is um, when the period between the annulling of the bill based on on uh, technicalities mm-hmm. and the rise of this wave. That time, we had no issues with homosexuality. Sorry. There was nothing going mm-hmm. on. It works for the West. It works for Uganda. So that is the strategic silence and the game theory, part, which I believe the president was requesting that proceeds. Perhaps the, rec- the prayer of the president right now, and I was... I was listening keenly when he was talking of some of the technical issues, like mm. the speaker. Mm. Um, the speaker perhaps sided with the side. I hope the, I, I believe the prayer of the president might be that uh, someone within, you know, the normal uh, suspects on petitioning government mm. finds a technical loophole so that it's again annulled, because that is when it gives space for even himself. He's not a fan of homosexuality, but he's aware. It gives a space because we are not fighting. He knows we are not fighting using law. The first thing we are taught in law school is you're just learning the law. Society is a whole different sphere. Mm. And he knows that we are fighting a whole different hegemony. It includes media, includes books. For example, right now, if you're going to get books donated from California for your school in the village, it may come with these different types of families. Mm-hmm. So there are all those other complex things to be dealt with that cannot be dealt with by, I hammer you, you hammer my head. Mm-hmm. And I believe that was what uh, the president was, was, I mean, in all his calculations, I think that is what he was trying to, to mean by saying, why don't we think about it? On the side of the Western world, I think this is a perfect, if, if we have considered the West our enemy, I think this is the perfect situation they want to be in. Mm-hmm. Because... Firstly, the whole country is talking about homosexuality, True. Yeah, including in Kitgum, mm. even where I'm from, even where he's going, you know, mm. <laughs> and tomorrow. Mm. If, I was, if I was the chief uh, communication strategist of the gay movement, I would have very many, you know how we rate, um, you know, excellence in, in, in media, analytics, impressions mm. Mm. would be so many. Mm. However, we all know that the law is going nowhere. Mm? The law... If it's not annulled technically, it will be annulled by court. And if it's not annulled by court, there's an incoming a lot of leaders who will find higher perspective. I mean, how, higher, do you, how do you know that it is it is going nowhere? I am I'm 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 basing on on the on, on retrospect, but also within the content. Mm. Within the content, it does not serve the interests of Uganda at this moment, and the president knows this. If you read between the lines. So my own prophecy, and in prophecy, you don't need a lot of data, yes. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that if this law survives a technical petition, it will not survive the content one. And if survive the content petition, soon there will come a leadership, or even the same leadership will find another priority that will have this law annulled. Or the law will become what we call a shelf law in, in legal terms. It's there, but has never been used. There are countries that have homosexuality bills of 1880s have never been used. So that is the future of this law, in my own uh, opinion. Interesting. Apollo, where do we go from here? And, and help us build, <laughs> I, help I, us build I, a scenario. I, 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 
I, I to some extent agree that uh, like I said in my first submission that mm. there could be technical errors that have been uh, committed and there could be other uh, critical aspects um, of the law that could have been omitted yeah. during the process of mm. the bill. And uh, you, like you were asking if it was rushed, I to some extent also agree that it could have been rushed, looking mm. at, uh, uh, it was it was just five days, I think, to, mm. to receive witnesses yes. and, and, mm. and, and, and hear from, from the submissions uh, from the public. But I also think that it could have been uh, due to the fact that we went through this whole process long ago. The law was first introduced in Parliament in 2009. Mm -hmm. It yeah. spent five years in Parliament to be passed in 2014. 2014. Mm. So I also think that the, 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 the swiftness you've seen in processing the bill could be attributed to the fact that we have had time to interrogate the, 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 the intricates of, 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 of the whole issue and uh, what we had to do is to, to panel beat here and there. I, I, I was actually um, in the beginning thinking and asking myself why they had to go through this whole process because we already had a bill that was taken to the president and he has sent him to it. Meaning that the president, even, even this process we are waiting for of the president um, looking, scrutinizing uh, the clauses and, and assenting to it, it was, it, it was already it, it was done. Mm -hmm. He went through it. Actually, um, that I, I was of a view that uh, if they had picked the other beer and, and revised it, yeah, mm -hmm. and and hopefully that's what they did. They picked the other one, um, uh, polished it, and and, and 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 sent it to the president. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I have some questions too. Mm -hmm. Go I'm ahead. Sorry to... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So probably to give an example of of. But because I slightly disagree with what uh, what Apollo says, mm. we uh, with an example that is maybe close to us. So in, in I think in uh, I think a couple of years back, the Parliament passed the GMO bill. Mm. The GMO bill was later, it was it, yeah, it was returned. Yeah. Actually, it it went before when before, it, before was it was even introduced. It was the GMO bill, and then later it was I think called the biosafety yes, biotech yeah. bioengineering something. As we speak today, there are conversations to bring it. Things have changed so, so, so much that that bill is going to be affected close to 95%. There are things to do with health. We've had COVID, the mRNA vaccines. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. And and Prof just, is, is, I'm not saying the GMO bill, I'm just saying that. A 2009 things, bill. Th things certainly change so can't fast. Be good for 2020. The dynamics change so fast. Mm. Okay. That, mm, yeah. I, if, if you you thank you so mm. much. If mm. you say the dynamics have changed mm. in these nine or seven or eight years, why don't you think the dynamics have changed for a law that was done during colonial times in 1950s, the Penal Code Act, to uh, to 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 to, to to support the, the, the argument that we need. They're actually over 14 law. years between 2009 yes. to 2023. Yes. Mm. No, um, it was passed in 2014. It was passed in 2014, mm. but it was introduced in 2009. Yeah. Mm. And so a lot has changed in mm. curricula, in exposure, exactly. in our reality. In that is what I am itself. asking. Mm. That if it, a lot has changed in all these, in, in these few years, nine or ten years, what about a law that was introduced during colonial times in 1950 to necessitate, to necessitate a new legislation. But I think, so, I, I think no, 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 wait, wait a minute. Penal code after. It is you who brought it up. Mm. Because if you say a lot has changed during the nine years, then what about a law um, 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 uh, besides the Penal Code Act? No, I agree that I agree that specific matters within the Penal Code Act move faster than the Penal Code Act as a whole. But what I'm saying, yeah. I agree. I agree that indeed there was uh, there was some form of rush. But I also say that it could have, it could be attributed to the fact that all these issues, many of these provisions were discussed, and actually the president had endorsed them by his assent. Uh, you, you you also asked um, um, you know, what, what possibly I don't know if you, if you were asking if what we what we should expect. No, where here. do we go from here? Because mm. with such, and, and, and I know it's a heavy cloud on a lot of Ugandans on what happens next, mm. but then also in perspective of, you know, the community affected is, 
what happens if such a law, regardless of whether it's passed or not, mm. birthes, you know, radicalism within mm. the community? Or, okay. and if, if attending okay. end, if it is passed, what happens to its implementation? So where do we go from here? Okay, now I, 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 I remember um, part of what I wanted to also submit that yes. Um, um, I was also concerned that uh, it, uh, the, the, the president was returning many bills to parliament. Mm. It was also my concern. I also have a feeling that possibly the president will have um, uh, ground for, for returning the bills from what I said, the penalties and all that. But I still insist that we need uh, some form of legislation in that, in that line because things have changed. Like um, Timothy says, when um, the society, the society is, is dynamic, it is changing every time. But when it changes, then you have to uh, look at how you can guide the society. Because um, you had the case of Jinja, where a, a lady was um, um, suspected to be uh, a lesbian, and, and you, you could see the report, the people were actually uh, at the gate waiting to lynch her. You get it. So without um, guidance from the law. And I think that is the essence of what of, of, of laws and uh, to guide society. Mm. Then if you don't have such legislation, you, you, you will breed anarchy, you, uh, mob violence will also be, because uh, you, you can feel it, that, mm. that the, the emotions were high um, at a point when um, a school, a big school here in this city was implicated. You, you could feel it that something should 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 be should be done and and possibly I think that is what kind of attributed to the move by the uh, proponents of this law to go to parliament and enact such a legislation. Interesting. Um, you want to you want to rebut to that? <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> I want to conclude the conversation here, yeah. gentlemen. Thank you for joining me in this conversation. It's quite a sticky one. Yes, it is. And a lot of people that are having this conversation definitely do tread carefully, mm. lest it, it it hold you you're held accountable for mm. the things you've said. <laughs> yeah, but, but you see, Trisha, also, um, you, you talked about the issue of visas. Really, um, it, it's also another thing we should talk about. Why would you deny me a visa because of this and this and that? It's also another form of blackmail. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's uh, I, I don't, if, if, you, if you're talking about um, um, uh, fairness, being mm. fair, mm. then you, you see that there is, there is something not right. In, Interesting. In, 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 so, so the question is to sanction or not to sanction. Mm. That is a question to interrogate <laughs> after this. Mm -hmm. But from us to you, and maybe from me, is the reality of what the anti-homosexuality bill speaks to in addressing our humanity. Mostly also our perception and reception to human rights and what they mean to us on an individual basis. I hope as this conversation continues in the gallery that we start to interrogate what really Ubuntu means. Because I think that's also a point of reference for us in making such a law. And also what human rights really mean in addressing you know, societal issues. But from us at Focus on Parliament, we thank you for joining us today. I've been your host, Trisha. Bye.